Helmets and safety gear weren't exactly high on the agenda for mountain biking's pioneers in California. In fact, denim was a popular choice in the 70s, quite often in full Canadian tux attire. But uh, as far as helmets went, it was down to the crash beanie. But today we have some incredible tech built into mountain bike helmets. In fact, there are several potentially life-saving features built into helmets like this POC tech towel. But exactly how different is an early mountain bike helmet compared to something like this? Let's take a closer look, shall we? This is the POC Tectile Race Spin NFC helmet. It represents the latest in tech, and POC wanted us to demonstrate just how relevant and important this is when you skip back in time and look at how basic the early helmets were. The first real cycling helmets looked a bit like um, a pack of sausages. Yeah, um, just like this leather thing here. I can't imagine these would have been any good in the event of a crash because I'd see the leather actually gripping, uh, which wouldn't be good for those oblique impacts. Now, I can definitely see why the clunkers and the early mountain biking pioneers just didn't bother. Absolute rubbish. Anyway, by 1988, thankfully, Specialized made the Air Force helmet. It was made from EPS, it was extremely light, and yet managed to be protective. Now, just like modern mountain biking helmets, the Air Force One had an EPS construction, which meant it was designed to crush on impact to reduce the shock transmitted to your skull. And although it's got loads of vents on it and it's super light, it wasn't half hot. And believe it or not, despite the fact it has, should we say, unusual looks, kind of Super Mario-esque, it was actually cutting edge in terms of fashion in 1988, and you could even tailor the Lycra cover to match your spandex outfit. Yeah, you look really cool, Doddy. Have you any idea how hard it is to find 1988 mountain bike gear that you can actually ride in? And yes, before you aren't, that's actually a 1988 Specialized Stump Jumper. Top of the range that was, back then. Now something quick to say that's really important when we're making these retro versus modern comparisons is just to accentuate just how different things are. Now these are similar sized bikes. Yeah, this one is from 1988. And actually I would have been nine years old in 1988 and it probably would have fitted me quite well then. Uh, trying to ride this bike now is, it feels nearly impossible. The brakes are almost non-existent. You can feel the contours on pebbles. You can feel every little bit of rough terrain on it. And it's crisis management, it's not mountain biking. Not as we know it today anyway. The technology that we have on today's bikes is it's not even leagues apart, it's a different sport. What you can do on even a basic modern mountain bike is just, it's frankly incredible, but it can also get you into trouble. Now, it's really important to underline the fact that if you're riding mountain bikes today, you're probably not riding basic fire roads like you would have done on these. You're probably riding more aggressive terrain, even if you're riding it slower. The chances are at some point you could have an accident and you're gonna need the relative safety gear to take care of that. And these are just miles apart. I mean, looking at this Air Force helmet, it's almost laughable compared to what we have today. It was actually designed around road cyclists, as was, to be fair, most mountain bike clothing back then. It was all just adapted. So the helmet itself, it doesn't have any retention on there. As a result, no matter how tight you do the thing, even if you're restricting your, your neck and your windpipe, the thing wobbles around uncontrollably on your head. Uh, it's actually super uncomfortable to ride in on that basis. The modern helmet though is totally different. It's got an adjustable cradle. It's three position on the rear, so it does cater for different shaped heads. You can adjust it easy on the fly, so when you're climbing, perhaps, if you want a slightly looser fit, you can uh, release the tension on it. And as a result, the helmet just doesn't move when it's on your head. It's extremely comfortable and feels really secure. Now the retro helmet, well, it's made from EPS and it doesn't have any external protection. 
So it wasn't too uncommon to see these things get cracked when you hit your head on trees or just as a result of daily use, not like the new helmet. So you look at any good modern helmet like this POC, and you look at all the effects that it has of having the shell on there. The shell takes care of those daily sort of knocks and scrapes that you're gonna get from riding off-road. And it also looks after the finish of the helmet as well. I mean, look at the Lycra cover on the old lid. It does nothing. Well, except look cool. When mountain biking started, just using a helmet seemed pretty safe. Most people just didn't bother. You know, you've also got to take into account that we didn't consider things like rotational injuries back in the 80s. You know, if you knocked your head, you pretty much dust it off and get back and ride your bike. It's not like the knowledge we have today, and it's not like the speed we can ride at today, and nor is it anything like what the modern day bikes allow us to ride on today. You know, whether you're a high ability rider or someone just starting out, the fact is you can get on a really good bike and ride on almost any terrain. And you absolutely do need to have the relevant safety gear for that. So this is the POC Tectile Race Spin NFC. And it's POC's top of the line mountain bike trail helmet. And this is about as good as it gets when it comes to looking after your head in the event of a crash. Now starting from the inside out, it's got an EPS construction. And that stands for expanded polystyrene. And the job of this is to crush and crumple on impact. On the outside of the helmet is a PC polycarbonate construction. This is designed not only to protect the EPS liner from UV light, it's also designed to keep it protected against daily scuffs. This is designed to keep it in one piece. And also it looks brilliant to boot. You've got a peak on the front which shields you from sun and also from rain and when you're going through low shrubbery it's got metal hardware keeping that in place. In addition to the huge amount of vents and exhaust ports that you see on this helmet, this is enabled by using Aramid in the design. It's got a big Aramid bridge that runs through this part of the helmet. It actually increases the strength of the helmet so much it's stronger than it would be if it had no vents by having the Aramid bridge built into it. Essentially it's one of the strongest helmets you can get, it's one of the safest helmets you can buy. Now you might have noticed there's a couple of logos on a helmet you don't see on other bike helmets. And one of them is the Reco logo on the back of the helmet. And this is a particularly cool one. Now Reco is essentially a magnetic beacon system and it's so emergency services can locate your location. Now this was originally developed in the 1980s as a way to find people trapped in avalanches, but it's now used in loads of modern outdoor equipment. You see it in clothing, you see it in boots, you see it in jackets, and of course in POC helmets, which is an obvious choice really given where we now ride mountain bikes. But the latest bit of technology stored on this POC tactile helmet is actually the NFC medical ID chip that's in here. Now this thing really is the cream on the cake because you can store all your emergency information on a tiny little chip here. Now the cool thing about this, is there's no battery involved, there's no signal involved. This is near field communication. So it doesn't rely on Wi-Fi or 3G or 4G or 5G or anything like that. All you need is the information that's stored on here via an app on your mobile phone. And this thing is so good and the emergency services everywhere are getting tuned in on this. In fact, there's over 180 emergency organizations already using this in over 40 countries and counting. And this is how easy it is to use. It's as simple as loading up the Twice Me app on your device. Now once it's loaded, you tap the screen to scan using the camera on your device. You just hold it over the little logo that's on the helmet, comes up with a tick and it's just loading the information right now. So this really is a key feature for the first responders out there because they see that logo on the helmet, they know it's got an NFC chip in there and it's gonna have your medical information. And just loading up the app, I can see it's got my name here. It's got latitude and longitude GPS coordinates and you can send those directly to the medical services so they can get to you wherever you are. This is absolutely brilliant. So you've got all other medical information, whatever you decide to put on there, you can have blood types, allergies, whether you've got a pacemaker, uh, if you have an organ donor, your name, date of birth, body weight, all those sort of essential things for the first responder. And really, I think this is the absolute gold that's tucked away in this helmet because essentially it's gonna give you a voice if you're unconscious. And that really does put it in a different place to other helmets. As you can see, modern day mountain bike helmets are a far cry from where we started out. They're stronger, they're safer, they're more secure, they're lighter, they're more comfortable, they're more ventilated, they can even help you be found and also provide emergency services with vital information if you're unable to give it. Totally different from where we started out, which is just as well given that modern day mountain bikes 
can ride any terrain at seemingly any speed. Now do take care when you're out there and take into account that when you buy a mountain bike, there's only one thing that you really need, and that's a helmet. Well, picking one. Should be a piece of cake, shouldn't it?